we have uploaded a number of videos on the book of Revelation, chapters 1 to 9. In chapter 1, we looked at the giving of the book of Revelation by Jesus to John on the island of Patmos. In chapters 2 and 3, Jesus sent seven messages to seven churches in Asia. Chapters 4 and 5 highlight the government of heaven and a mysteriously sealed book. In chapters 6 and 7, Jesus unveils the apocalypse, and God's people are sanctified for salvation. Finally, chapters 8 and 9 explore the sounding of six trumpets by six angels. Today, we will examine Revelation chapter 10. Bear in mind that it was the opening of the seventh seal that introduced the seven trumpets. At the end of the blowing of the sixth trumpet, the rest of mankind did not repent. The final two verses of Revelation chapter 9 said, The rest of mankind, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons, and idols of gold, silver, and brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear, nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their theft. Chapter 10 of the book of Revelation began with a change of scene. John's attention was captured by another shocking sight. A mighty angel descended onto the earth. This angel resembled Jesus Christ on the island of Patmos in Revelation chapter 1. However, John, who had been quite familiar with the features and mannerisms of Jesus, clearly expressed that it was an angel, and not Jesus. This angel descended from heaven, and placed his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. In prophecy, as we learned earlier, a body of water represents peoples and languages and tongues and nations. A large body of water indicates a huge mass of people. Land, on the other hand, represents a smaller amount of people. The angel placed his right foot, right, represents power, on the sea and his left foot on the land. Here, this act of the angel show that, despite our beliefs, God is in control of everything and everyone on both sea and land. The angel yelled in a low voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. The word thunder is not literal. The seven thunders are symbols of heavenly beings. So, in the book of Revelation, we often hear the expression, seven churches, seven angels, seven candlesticks, or seven stars, which are symbols to heavenly things. The seven thunders are the seven spirits of God, who stand before the Lord of the earth. They are responsible for carrying out the commandments of God. Now, John was about to write what the seven thunders uttered. But one of the angels stopped him from writing whatever the angel proclaimed. Earlier, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, Jesus commanded John to write the things that he sees and hears. He was to record the things that were happening, and the things that would happen in the future, and send them to the seven churches in Asia. But now, an angel is telling John not to record what the seven thunders said. There seems to be a contradiction here. Nowhere in the book of Revelation is this dilemma explained. However, there is evidence that the utterances of the angel were fulfilled as the churches progressed through time. Another interesting incident occurred as the angel stood on the sea and the land. The angel had in his right hand, a little book. John was instructed to take the book from the angel's hand. The angel advised John that when he took the book, he must eat it. He said that the book would be sweet in John's mouth, but bitter in his stomach. When John ate the book, just as the angel warned, it was sweet in his mouth and bitter in his stomach. Two questions arise. First, what was this book? And second, why was it bitter? It is important to analyze what happened in this very short scene. Firstly, in scriptures, book symbolizes the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here Christ gave John new revelation to take back to his fellow believers. By eating the book, John assimilated the instructions and teachings of Christ. Secondly, John loved to preach and tell others about Jesus. So the book was sweet in his mouth. However, 
The messages he had to tell the world was very very sad. It includes catastrophe and disaster and destruction and death. So, it was bitter in his stomach. The angel with the little book raised his hands to heaven, and swore by the one who lived forever, that there will be no more delay. He declared that, in the day of the sounding of the seventh trumpet, the mystery of God, which was shown to his servants, the prophets, shall manifest. After these things, John was commanded to go back, and to preach again, to a dying world. As we look towards the coming of a new heaven and new earth, let us stand together as we usher in that great day of the Lord.